Hello. So now our topic is soldering and welding in dental materials. When we are learning different dental materials, we need to also know repairing of those materials if required as well. So what is soldering and welding? It is same as that of engineers that it is the process of building up a localized area with a filler metal or joining two or more metal components with the same by heating it temperature below the solidus temperature and filling the gap between them using a molten metal with a liquidious temperature below 450 degrees Celsius. Now what is solidus temperature? What is liquidious temperature? So solidus temperature is that at which a metal of an alloy system becomes completely solid on cooling or starts to melt on heating. Whereas a liquidious temperature is at which a metal of an alloy system begins to solidify on cooling or becomes totally liquid on heating. Above liquidious temperature, the metal are entirely liquid and below the solidious temperature, the metal materials are entirely solid. Now let's see what are the uses of soldering. Now the uses of soldering in dentistry is it is used in assembling of bridges if broken building up of contact points on onlays and crowns, for joining wire clasps, for joining different components of orthodontic appliances, fastening the attachment to fixed and removable partial dentures. So these are all the uses of soldering. What all is needed to do a soldering? So we need a filler metal that is solder, we need a flux and an anti-flux, what is flux and anti-flux? Flux in Latin means flow. Then heat sources, we need a heat source, we need a substrate or metal or a basis metal. So these are all what we require for a soldering purpose. Now classification of solders can be either a hard solder or a soft solder. Hard solder like gold and silver. Soft solder like you have PBS and tin. Now hard solder means what? It the higher the fusion temperature, higher the strength will be. So it is a hard solder. What does soft solder means? The fusion temperature will be less and there is a good mechanical properties of the soft solders. These are the examples of plumber solders. Now we see the compositions of solders. We have gold solders, silver solders, we have turbine solders, gold solders. Maximum composition will be gold. For silver, the maximum composition will be silver. For turbine solder, it is a silver which is high rate and we have copper, zinc and cadmium which is there. Whereas in a gold solder also we have copper, zinc, tin, silver, everything is present but then silver content is low. Whereas in compared to silver solder, we have no gold content as that of gold solder. Now, for example, if the melting point is 700 to 730 degrees Celsius, it can be used to solder stainless steel. If the melting point is more than that 660 degrees Celsius, it can be used as a cobalt chromium steel. Now let's see what are the requirements of a solder. The requirements of a solder are it should be tarnish and corrosion resistant, it can be fusion temperature, should be good. The flow property should be great enough, there should be no pitting in the material and it should have color and strength. Now coming to the first thing that is flux, I told you earlier that flux in Latin means flow. So according to their purposes, type 1 is a surface protection, type 2 is a reducing type and type 3 is a solvent kind of fluxes. The common flux that we use in dentistry is borax and fluoride fluxes. Now borax is a powder of borax glass or a sodium pyrobrate that is 55%, boric acid is present in that that is 35% and silica as a filler 10%. Whereas in a fluoride flux, we will have more of potassium fluoride, boric acid and silica. Now borax flux, where is it used? It is used in noble metal alloy and it is of type 1 and 2. The fluoride flux is a base metal alloy which is used and it is of type 3. Various forms of flux that is present. It can be paint on a substrate. It can be fused on a filler material. It can be pre-flux solder. Now why do we require a flux? Because we need the material to flow in between the metals which is to be joined. So the flux is a main important thing. So flux either it can be painted on those metals, it can be flown with the temperature, 
it can be pre-flux solders can be present like a small pellet so you can keep that in between and you can flow the heat onto that so these are the different flux now anti-flux at times you need to stop the flow of a material so that a substance that prevents the flow of melted solder on an area coated by it is called anti-flux we do not want in one particular area that metal to flow like for example we have made an important structure called rest in a cast partial denture we do not want our metal of flux to flow in that cast partial rest because it will not seep then so in that area you will run and provide anti-flux like graphite or we have chalk in alcohol when you mix the chalk with alcohol now coming to what are the heat sources which are present the heat sources which is present is we have gas air or gas oxygen torches the fuel which is used can be hydrogen can be nitrogen gas it can be propene or it can be acetylene for example this particular zone of a full flame can be classified into four zones a combustion zone an induction zone or oxidizing zone a reducing zone or a burned zone that is also called an oxidizing zone so the technical procedure what can be the different types how the techniques is concerned to it can be freehand soldering like in, we do it in ortho cases it can be investment soldering it can be done after the failure of investment it can be oven or a furnace soldering for the bigger material now coming to the difference between solder and welding soldering what we did we use another material in between two different material two different material were used to fix in welding no different material is used to fix process of fusing two or more metal parts together through the application of heat or pressure between them with or without a filler metal or to produce a localized union across a interface between two parts basically there is no third metal no different metal to say and the methods of welding can be of fusion welding or it can also be called pressure welding so the fusion welding what are the types of fusion welding we have arc welding we have laser we have gas weldings for pressure welding we have resistance steam welding and we do have resistance spot welding now to see after the circuit diagram of a spot welder we have a ac main which is there which is activated between the timing switch and we have a resistor now this resistor will not allow the current to pass through this particular place or the heat to activate over there we have two tappings present and this is a primary welding which is happening now if the welding temperature the welding temperature is too high there is this step down transformation which will not allow higher power to go to the electrodes so here it will step down it will come to a lower and secondary welding will take place in a lower temperature and then that will be transformed to the electrodes the amount of energy that is required here is 250 to 270 750 amperes 2 to 6 volts are required and 1 by 100 second is required just to complete a welding so soldering and welding is important for dentistry in concern for prosthodontist for cast partial dentures crown bridges and lace uh, posts it is important for orthodontics for braces for application of different welded parts or application of different bonding parts so there is where the soldering and welding comes into picture in the case of dental materials thank you